So what exactly is the angle bisector theorem and the converse of the angle bisector theorem? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video and we're gonna go through a couple examples of how to use those two theorems. So first of all, the angle bisector theorem. So say you have this angle here and you draw a ray that bisects, meaning it cuts the angle in half. If you pick a point anywhere along this angle bisector, let's just say right here, and you measure the perpendicular distance. Now it's important that you always measure the perpendicular distance or the right angle distance because that's the shortest distance from a point to a line. And what happens is when you draw that perpendicular distance, these two distances are gonna be congruent to one another. Now you might be saying, Mario, why are these two distances the same? Why does that work? Well, notice that they share this side in between the two triangles by the reflexive property. And you can see that these are both right triangles and by the angle, angle, side, angle, angle, side, the two triangles are congruent. So therefore by CPCTC, the corresponding parts of congruent triangles will be congruent. So that's why it works, it's based on congruent triangles. Now, when you look at the converse of the angle bisector theorem, what is that saying? Well, say you have an angle and you pick a point on the interior of this angle and you measure the perpendicular distance to both sides of the angle, if those distances are the same, what do you know about this point? Well, it must lie on the angle bisector. Now you can prove this to yourself by using congruent triangles again. We notice that this is uh, congruent because it's shared between the two triangles by the reflexive property. They're both right triangles. The hypotenuse is congruent in both triangles and one of the legs is both congruent uh, in both the triangles. So that's the hypotenuse leg theorem. And by CPCTC, the corresponding parts of congruent triangles, we can prove or show that these angles are congruent, meaning that this point lies on the angle bisector. Okay, so let's go through a couple examples so you can see how this works. So for number one, notice we have, they're giving us that this is an angle bisector, right? Because these angles are congruent. So if we have a point here on the angle bisector, what do we know about the distances to the sides of the angle? They must be congruent. So that tells us that X is equal to eight. Pretty simple, right? Now, if you forget, just use your congruent triangles. You can see that this is congruent by reflexive. The two triangles are congruent by angle, angle, side, and by CPCTC, the corresponding parts are congruent, right? For number two now, a little bit different. Here they show us that the perpendicular distance from this point to the side and this point to the side of the angle, they're uh, congruent, okay, they're equal, and see they're at right angles. So what does that tell me about this point right here? It lies on the angle bisector. So this is the converse of the angle bisector theorem, which allows us to prove that these two angles are congruent to each other and we can set them equal and solve for X. Now, if you forget, it's good to kind of know the underpinnings of this, which is to say that, hmm, this side is congruent to itself by reflexive. These are right triangles, so the hypotenuse is the same and one of the legs is the same in both triangles. So by the CPCTC, the corresponding parts of congruent triangles, these angles will be congruent. So let's go ahead and solve this uh, little algebra equation and find out what X is. So angle bisector theorem and the converse of the angle bisector theorem. So let's see, we're getting 2X is equal to 15, and if I divide both sides by two, X is coming out to 7.5. So great job if you're able to follow the angle bisector theorem and its converse. If you wanna go deeper with me, you like the way that I explain things and you wanna learn more about geometry, I'm gonna put a playlist of 11 videos that take you through a typical geometry course, going through the theorems like we talked about in this video, but example problems and some opportunities for you to practice as well. So follow me over to my geometry course free here on YouTube and we'll go through those 11 videos. I'll see you over there.